Welcome. It's Thank great you. to have you here. You can see the excitement. Yes. It's, it's great to be here. You guys, I watch you every morning while I'm doing my exercise. I'm usually in my underwear, but you don't see me. So it's so nice of you to put on pants. You know, that's not an image, does, that's an image right? we'll try and keep in our exactly. mind. Exactly. Yeah. So when we look into the camera, we're going to see you in your underwear. Uh, sort of like romper room with the magic yes. mirror. Got it. Thank you for watching. Uh, perhaps we'll give you some ideas for a futuristic novel. No, I'm just starstruck to be here. <laughs> Tell us about this. I mean, Dennis Rader, mm -hmm. the guy who is this real life sort of. The BTK. He was the model. prototype for yeah. um, the guy in my in my story, and uh, he murdered ten people. Two of them were children, and he had a long marriage, two kids of his own, and his wife said after he was caught uh, that she she never knew she never had a clue of uh, what he was doing and this mm -hmm. this secret life that he had and so I started to think I wonder how many of us are sleeping with strangers mm -hmm. and what we really know about the people that we think we're close to so this story it's, came out of that and, and what I would wanted we to do? follow it. What would yeah. we do Stephen if we found that they had really done something right. horrible that's right. as scary as it was it did make you think how would I handle a situation mm -hmm. like that I think I'd be called 911 yeah. <laughs> but for other people it did it made you think. Well part of the th thing with uh, um, Joan Allen's character Darcy is there are two kids uh, one of them is about to get married yes. and the other one is just started in business and she's thinking if this comes out right now my kids lives are going to be ruined. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now this is the first time you've written a screenplay in 25 years is that right? It's been a long time I did a screenplay for uh, a movie called Pet Cemetery. Mm -hmm. uh, we scared a few people with that. <laughs> yes. I think. Wait, you know, this is I think because you are so charming and interesting and apparently seem normal in person. What draws there's nothing you? creepy about it. There's nothing creepy question. about you and yet you write really creepy stories. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it's a little bit like what we were talking about with a good marriage. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there are other people inside uh, that we don't always let out in public. Mm -hmm. Now, I sort of do that because I write the stories, but, you know, I had a very normal childhood. But of course, I'd say that, wouldn't I? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but is there someone creepy inside, yes. Stephen? Yeah, I'd say there's somebody fairly creepy inside, but that's a harmless creepy person because it comes out in the stories. You know, I sometimes say to people, there are people who have complexes and fantasies and they go to a psychiatrist and they pay $50, yes. $70 an hour. I do the same thing and people pay me, so. Yeah. But doesn't yeah. your reputation precede you when you go places? I mean, really, do they think that you're gonna be this dark kind of creepy guy when you're walking around yeah. town? Yeah. yeah, somebody this morning when I came in said, I thought you'd be wearing black. <laughs> <laughs> but you did Shawshank Redemption. I did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. In fact, I was in a grocery store down in Florida, and I came around the corner of the aisle, and there was this uh, elderly woman who was pushing her cart, and she looked at me, and she said, "I know who you are. You write those scary things, and that may be okay for some people. I respect you, but I don't read things like that." And I said, "Well, ma'am, I, I wrote the Shawshank Redemption and Stand by Me," and she said, "No, you didn't." <laughs> And then walked away. <laughs> and then walked no. right past me. So you get a reputation. You're yes. right. You get a yeah. reputation. Uh -huh. it, it, to, to like creepy doesn't make you creepy. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's well said. I'm going to put that in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> but what scares you? Does anybody ever walk up and go to you and stoop boo? And try to scare you? Well, they do, but that doesn't really scare me. You know, on a, on a real world level. <laughs> no, so, I'm case hardened. So, yes. what would really scare you? Yeah. Well, on a real world level, uh, you know, I'm 67, I just had a birthday, and guys like me, guys who are actors, uh, writers, uh, sculptors, painters, we live by our wits, comedians, mm -hmm. and I think that what really scares me is you know starting to strip my gears a little bit yeah. Alzheimer's dementia yeah. things like that I I hate the idea of that yeah, mm -hmm. yeah so me too. but you know losing control losing but, control but also you know like spiders bats things that get stuck in your hair <laughs> does, does that bother you yeah yeah spiders and bats yeah me too yeah. you know there's a story about when you were hit by the van or a car um, years ago and you're okay we know that is it true that you actually bought that vehicle 
and beat it up with a hammer? <laughs> no. My wife bought it, uh, <laughs> and the reason she bought it was she was afraid somebody would put it for sale on eBay. Oh, okay. <laughs> so she had to put it in a car crusher. It was a little tiny cube, I guess. Yeah. Okay. You, okay. You were a high school teacher, right? And mm -hmm. then you wrote oh. Carrie back in 1974, and it almost wasn't published. Yeah. Until, I, was, you know. I was in high school, uh, teaching high school. Yeah. Uh, when I wrote the book, and uh, I had, had no idea it was going to be published. We had no phone in the house at that time because mm -hmm. we had two kids and all the money had to go for them. But it was your and, wife, right? So yeah, my wife fished it out of the, the, the trash. I wrote about four girl. pages. It started in a girl's locker room, and I said, I don't know anything about this. And she said, I will help you. Oh. She was a little amused, I think, by the whole idea. We've been teasing you all morning about not liking Halloween. Is that no. true? I'm sort of the Halloween Grinch. How can that be, given what because, you do? Because, uh, you know, it's just like you get the scary reputation and you're sort of like the Santa Claus of Halloween. <laughs> and uh, we used to open the house and trillions of kids would come. And <laughs> finally my wife said, no, no more. Let's yeah. just turn off turn the lights, off the lights. And <laughs> cower in the basement. Uh, you almost died. You're in a good, good place now. I'm in a good place, yeah. Yeah, and uh, you know, I did almost die, and I got smashed up pretty, pretty well. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you ever completely mm -hmm. recover from that. But the body's amazing, and I'm mostly okay. Yeah. Good to see well, you. You're the, the first person we've ever had Twinkies in the green room for. I hope yeah. you appreciate the presentation. We yeah. worked hard. It was like <laughs> totally great to walk in and see Twinkies. <laughs> <laughs> Just for you, Stephen King. Su such a pleasure. Yes. Such a pleasure to Thank have you, you here. Thank you. For Stephen me too. King. Yeah. We feel the 350 same. million. Books sold or something like that. I mean, sometimes I feel like that's my age. It's incredible. <laughs> no, it's incredible. All right, a good marriage opens October third.